Our coffers were depleted at the Battle of Stirling, so we need to strengthen our economy once again before pushing south into lands held by the English. We need to construct the market and establish trade routes to the villages of friendly clans. Local legends speak of three sacred relics hidden south of Stirling. Acquiring these artifacts for Wallace's army will be a great boost to Scottish morale. The Scottish army has been rallied by recent victories against the English. Situation's starting to look up. Did you know that there are three different modes for the minimap in the lower right corner of the screen? Hmm? You can show only military units or only resources and trade units by clicking the buttons just below and to the right of the minimap. It will help the morale of our army to collect holy relics and place them in our monastery. One of the relics is close to your town. An ally has another relic. The English have captured the Good! You have a relic! Protect the relic in the monastery by right-clicking the monastery. You can retrieve a relic by clicking a monk and right-clicking the relic. Monks have other abilities as well. They can heal your injured soldiers or those of your allies. They can also attempt to convert enemy soldiers to join your arms. Perfect. You now have one relic garrison. Relics garrisoned in your monastery will slowly add gold to your stockpile. Farms are a good source of food once you've exhausted forage bushes and animals. Farms are built like buildings and must be periodically rebuilt. To gather food from a farm, click a villager, then right-click a farm. You've reached your ally's town. Go inside and see how his city's doing. Your ally's gate will open automatically for you. Welcome. If you've come for the relic, you can find it on the hill to the northeast of our town. to have allies on the map. Your ally, the yellow flyer, can help you fight the enemy. You can also trade with your allies. Uh, to trade, you'll need to build a map. Garrison. Bring back one more and you'll be victorious!
villagers and soldiers normally appear outside of the building that created them. You can have your units move to a spot once they're created by using gather points. To set a gather point for infantry, click your barracks, click set gather point, then click where on the map you want your infantry to gather. You can use the technology tree to see what technologies and upgrades you can research. Click the technology tree button in the upper right corner of the screen to see the tree for your civilization. The market can create trade cards to generate extra gold. You can also exchange one resource for another at the market for a small fee. Click the market, then click sell food for gold.
made a trade card. If you click the trade card on your allies market, you can make extra gold. Your trade card will automatically make trips between your and your allies market.
enough soldiers now to think about attacking the English and recovering their relic. If you're getting ready to attack the English, I can help you out. Here, take this food and wood. Yeah. 
With the three relics now locked away safely in Scottish churches, men murmur that we are blessed by the heavens. Our army now stands a chance as we prepare for the final clash with the English. Scotland now has archers and knights of our own with which to meet Longshanks. We march south to Falkirk, where we will rendezvous with the army of William Wallace and plan our combined attack upon the English castle. The only way we can hold the boggy lowlands around Falkirk is to build a castle and as many walls as we can construct in a short time. These fortifications will serve to protect our camp as we construct siege weapons with which to assault the English castle. Once the castle is constructed, Wallace himself has sworn to join our forces and together we will attack Longshanks and his English troops. The English could attack at any time. You have some walls already, but you should complete them as soon as you have enough stone. Bid fear. Tall. If you have surplus resources of one type, you can sell them for gold at your market. You can then use the gold to buy what you need. You can also build towers to defend your city. Units can garrison within a tower for defense and protection, and archers can even fire out of a tower. To build a castle, you must first advance to the next age, the Castle Age. The advance buttons let you set combat states for your soldiers. A defensive soldier will be less likely to attack an enemy that comes near him. Click a military unit, then note the combat stance buttons on the lower left corner of the screen. Using the advance buttons, you can also order a soldier to patrol an area between two points and guard or follow another unit. Fear. Here, beat fear. For 
Ольга Гюрре? The advanced buttons allow access to a new type of formation. For example, with a box formation, you can protect a weak unit such as a monk. You're going to find lots of things to do in the castle age. For starters, try building a siege workshop to make battering rams and other siege weapons. One of your most powerful units is created at the castle. Create ten more Wode Raiders. Bargaret. Erlov, Bargaret, To. Erlov, To, Erlov, To. Hit, To. To. Kid, to. 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 Kia, wrap up. Kid. Rob William Wallace and his wood raiders on your side, the English may be in trouble! Once you have a large army with plenty of siege weapons, go destroy the English castle! <laughs> Trebuchets are massive siege weapons with a great range, available only in the Imperial Age. Remember that trebuchets must be packed to move and unpacked to fire.
gemerkt. Resistant to arrow fire and excellent at knocking down walls. You may need some rams to attack the English castle.
at Falkirk is no more. The English pretensions in Scotland are surely at an end. The forces of Wallace are triumphant. Forget it. It looks certain that we would be defeated at Falkirk. Yet, somehow, though outnumbered and outranged by English longbows, we were victorious! English castle was torn down, and a Scottish one will be built in its place. William Wallace has shown us the path to victory. Although he's but one man, he inspires great deeds in others, and many of the Scottish princes and lords have drawn their swords with his. Wallace's own sword is a five and a half foot beast, forged, of course, in Scotland. I swore not to rest until his sword finds the neck of Edward Longshanks. The struggle will continue. But we have learned the ways of war. Now, it is the English who will know fear. <laughs> 